Shelley Hallsberg is a clairvoyant, medium, pet psychic, and tarot reader. She does not ask for the details about your life, but primarily relies on her gift of clairvoyance to receive the psychic insights that will be the most helpful to you about your soulmate, relationships, money concerns, and your career path. As a pet psychic, she will receive insights about what your pet or pets wants you to know. As a medium, she will connect with your loved ones on the other side. Shelley Hoffberg is the host of the Psychic Horizon radio show, produced by Goldilocks Productions and presented on Blog Talk Radio, Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Shelley brings together the pioneers and visionary teachers to share with you some of the most enlightening knowledge that is out there today to expand your horizons and open the path to higher consciousness. Welcome to the Psychic Horizons show. I'm your host, Psychic Shelley Hoffberg, and today's special guest is Bill Foss, who will be doing psychic readings for you and talking about psychic healing. And before I bring on Bill, I just want to make some quick announcements that this coming Saturday I'm going to be at the New New Earth Expo in Huntington Beach um, at the Center of Spiritual Living. And on August 11th I'm going to be at the Learning Light Foundation in Anaheim Psychic Fair um, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. At the New, Year's, New Earth Expo I'll be there between between, uh, at 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm now ready to end. Uh, I just want to announce my guest that on August 9th, I'm going to have psychic numerologist Jeremy Ryden, the author of the Quest Method, Your Intuitive Destiny Guide, and um, Your So Story, How to Create the Life You Always Wanted. And on August 23rd, I'm having Michael Espinoso, talking about chakras and August 30th I'm having psychic Trish talking about runes and Bill Foss is the author of the journey to the Akashic records and the secrets of spiritual success I'm now ready to bring on Bill hello Bill hello Shelley how are you today I'm fine how are you I'm doing great. I'm coming to you live from the base of Mount Shasta in Northern California. Oh, that's nice. And, Bill, can you tell the callers? Go ahead. I was just going to say the energy is very, very high vibration up here, and it's uh, just uh, very uh, honored to be here with you on the radio show from uh, this location and this uh, energy frequency. Oh, good. And, Bill, can you tell the callers a little bit about yourself? Yes. Uh, Well, as uh, I've been doing your shows now for a while, and uh, uh, I've shared with you uh, and uh, the listeners many things about my life path, I'll recap a little bit here. Uh, Early on, as a child, I was... uh, prone to creativity, where my external world was more hustle and bustle in sort of a Midwestern style or fashion. And uh, I always turned uh, into my inner vision, my inner creativity. There was a peace and a silence that I wanted. I just wanted to go inside. And so as I continued... uh, to access that over the course of growing up and going through school and grade school and junior high and high school, I started to, uh, I was a natural artist, so I was a natural born artist, and that was my escape, that was my fantasy world. Uh, As I, as I Uh, graduated high school, instead of going to college, I got into music, which was creative again, and started to travel, uh, and did this for the next 10 years, where uh, 
I I had no idea that spirit was going to be using all of that experience that I gained from traveling at that time in my life and applying it later as I went out and started to travel around the United States and around the world uh, to help people in session work and healing and Akashic Record session work and uh, and uh, in classes and workshops. So uh, as I got into uh, about 20 years ago, as I got into my study of the Akashic Records, it it was it's a very mind oriented uh self study as you go into it and you start learning the processes and, and reading the records and viewing in and working with others and learning things about the self in other lifetimes in this lifetime and it's it, it's really uh, it is based around the mind so as I went into this and continued to open through the soul and the and the chakras and the energy fields and all of this, over the course of the next 10 years into it, the healers and teachers on the other side that were working with me wanted me to start doing clearings for people that I was coming into contact, people that wanted readings and uh, sometimes healings. And I had had people tell me over the course of, of meeting people in the metaphysical world and spiritual world that I should be a healer and had no real reference for this. I, I had been a healer in other lifetimes, but like many other things, I was just relaxed and, you know, oh, okay, well, that's nice. Thank you very much, and I'll continue on my way. Interesting thing is many of us have this uh, latent ability or gift, and uh, dare I say all of us have this. So as I continued, uh, and they were just directing me in the moment. I had no awareness that I was going to be working. So I was working psychically with people from the Akashic Records, and there was a stream coming in with that, and then someone would step in front of me that ne- that seriously needed healing or clearing, and they would just help me to shift gears and say, well, I think that this is the way that you need help today. You need help uh, with healing or clearing. And nine times out of ten, the person would say, oh, yes, I agree, please. <laughs> so that was very helpful because the person already, uh, on some level, they already know, knew what they needed and their higher self or their soul or their mind or their conscious mind was just leading them right to me. Uh, and that's often how it is. The right people find us at the right time. We find, you know, everyone that we need to come in contact with as divine spirits working through all things. So uh, I continued to go into the clearing and the healing work. Uh, And at this point in my life and my spiritual development, my spiritual path and mission of of teaching and helping others with my gifts, the the clearings, the shamanic work, which I also do, and the healing, energetic healing, physical healing, medical intuitive, these are all forms of what we call psychic healing. And uh, so I, uh, at this point on my, on my journey, I'm doing as much healing work as I am doing Akashic Records work. Awesome. That's interesting. And, Bill, let's take our our, uh, first caller, area code 805, and then we'll start our interview. Hello, area code 805. Oh, thank you, Shelley. This is Donna. How are you? Hi, Bill. I'm fine. How are you, Donna? Good. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you. Um, I can hear my mother. She's on the other side. I hear her not all the time, but occasionally. And she came in very loud and clear in my head and said I was going to be rewarded. Do you know what that's going to be, a husband or more money or maybe it's on the other side? I don't know. I just wondered what you were picking up on this. Her name was Anne. Her name was Diane. And what is your name, dear? Oh, no. Her name was Anne, and my name is Donna. Oh, Donna. Okay. Donna, and her name is Anne. 
And where where are you calling from, Donna? Um, Santa Barbara, California. Okay. Let me just go into it for a moment here. Thank you. Okay, uh, Donna, what I'm getting uh, from your mother and from you and the area that you're in is that <clears throat> uh, that that term, that's, that's sort of a wide spectrum term. So what's mm-hmm. happening is let's, let's look at the whole playing field a little bit. So you're going okay. to be rewarded. And uh, we're in a time right now where there we just went through a a 48 hour lunar eclipse last Friday and Saturday which opened us up so it's like a it's like a new paradigm it's like a new reality almost for many of us we're stepping into a greater version of our life we also have five to six planets going retrograde over the course of the next few weeks here. Some are already in, Mars, Mercury. Uh, However, uh, most people, when they hear the word retrograde, we start freaking out. Oh, my God, you know, things are because of Mercury retrograde and what that has, the negative connotations in people's lives and the world. But... The interesting thing about this time, we're in a huge doorway of receiving blessings. And <clears throat> for you, with your energy and the area that you're in, it, you're in a very good inter- uh, you're in a very good location for yourself and your energy, uh, all of these astrological processions that are happening are literally helping to open you up to greater potentials. So I feel like there's going to be uh, some recognition for you in your uh, in your job or your line of work. Um, I also feel like there's going to be, uh, people are going to be viewing you a little bit differently. So the the interesting thing about that is that as you are as you are opening up you you're saying yes to the world around you and it allows the people that are more beneficial to you to to see you and acknowledge you in the moment so these are often people who are in places in positions that can help you. It's like you're opening the pathway. So is it being done for you outside of you? Yes. But are you doing it from within the movie and uh, the energy that you're involved with and the place that you're in? Yes. So it's, it's a mutually beneficial dynamic that's happening. It's like your vibration is clearing and lifting. And as that's happening, uh, more things are coming online for you. Uh, And I would uh, think that a relationship or uh, potential partnership is one of those dynamics. This is the right time for them. It feels like for you. So uh, I feel like you're in a really good doorway here over the next few weeks to create the magic that are that is going to have a long range effect for your life uh, from here on. Well, that sounds wonderful. Great, thank you so much. It really is a it really is a good time for you. It yeah. really is. And yeah. this this would be a good time for you to 
Now, I was talking about astrological processions and progressions and things of that nature, but I'm not suggesting that you get get buried in your, uh, that you dive into your zodiac or anything like that. But I think the thing that would really help you the most right now is to open your heart and to use your mind like we're going to be talking about psychic healing today and uh, to start visualizing, visualizing and creating what you want. Because the, this this time that we're in over the next this week on into the next two or three weeks is a very powerful time to manifest. And when planets are in retrograde, the thing that nobody knows, and I'll talk more about this in detail here after a while, that that when planets are in retrograde, this is a really powerful time to manifest. So th- this is when the, the, the power of the planet, the, the attributes of Venus, uh, of Saturn, of Mars, of, of Mercury, all goes a little bit silent or dormant, and it allows us to expand out and connect with their energies and receive their gifts. So this is a way that that, uh, hasn't been looked at too often, but you're in a really, really good place energetically uh, with the ocean and Santa Barbara. That whole area is really speaking to you. Definitely. Yes, it's, so, it's a magical place. Yeah, so this is a really good time for you to create some magic and uh, uh, write down what you want. Write down okay. what, uh, what you want. And uh, you can be general and also be specific and sit down and rehearse, do some mental rehearsal. And uh, where you're being opened, you're being open. And you're calling it in at the same time and see what happens. And I think this is where your rewards start coming in. Oh, good. I'll do that. Definitely. I feel, I feel, I feel, Donna, um, that the energy around you is shifting in a positive uh, direction and it's bringing it, as Bill said, it is bringing in uh, new opportunities, um, relationship-wise and career-wise. There's a new relationship coming in in September, October, and I do feel you've been married before and you will get remarried in one or two years, and I feel that there could be some (laughs) changes taking place around the job in terms of uh, uh, working the same company but in a different capacity and a new position. There might be a a new positioning opening up that um, you would get be able to take that position. And I feel that there's a shift with your money. Um, Money is going to uh, improve for you and I feel health is good. I'm not picking up any health yes. problems. Yes. It looks like you have a good health. And do you have a dog? No, I don't. My sister does. I see her dog once in a while, but they won't allow any pets where I live. Oh, too bad. That dog loves you. That dog oh, really likes you. I know. And I could have had her. I could have had the dog, but... I, yeah, I just can't. I mean, I call her and she comes to me, cuddles with me. Every time I call her, she comes to me. It's so cute. Yeah, she loves you. That dog loves you. She looks forward to seeing you. And it looks like you haven't been to your sister's lately, so the dog mm-hmm. is missing you, and the dog is Aww. wondering where you are. Aw. <laughs> I'll have to make a trip. Make a trip to pay a visit to the dog and your sister you know, soon because she's missing you. And, uh, Bill, how can Donna get in contact yeah. with you? Uh, Donna, if you'd like to get in contact, uh, my uh, website is billfoss.net. That's B-I-L-L-F-O-S-S dot net. And my phone number is 918-770-3888. And if you need to get a... And if you need to get a hold of me, Donna, 
My number is 818-744-5241, or you could go to my website, psychichorizon.com. And thank you for calling the Psychic Horizon thank Show, you. Donna. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good day. I'm now going to start my interview with Bill Foss on psychic healing, and then we're going to take our next caller, which is area code 720. What What is psychic healing, Bill? Well, Shelley, that's that, that's a great question, and um, when we when we hear those two words together, it it starts a synergy for us in our mind, in our thoughts, in our, crea- in our creative mind, in our creative thinking. Uh, so we all know what psychic is. Psychic is, deals with uh, the extrasensory perception of the mind, the extra, per- the extra, extra per- uh, perception sensory of the brain. And the brain is the engine that's driving the mind, and the mind being part of the consciousness that is uh, living from the brain and the rest of our fields in our body. Uh, The mind is actually a field of energy that's around the body. It's part of... The mind field is part of the multi-layered energy field around the body. So as we look at the brain and the mind field around the body, then we have our chakra system, which runs up our spinal cord from our tailbone up through each chakra, and these are connected to this multi-layered system around the body. So the chakra is sort of governing each layer of that field. Each chakra is governing each layer of that rainbow field. In the As we get up through the chakras into the brain, we have the pineal gland that sits in the center of the brain, which is connected with the crown, uh, with the crown chakra, it's also connected with the third eye, and the rest of the chakras are connecting up to this pineal gland, where uh, the crown chakra is this field of energy over our head that connects us with heaven, which connects us to all dimensions, and the pineal gland itself is a gateway to all dimensions. So most of the time, we're only conscious of this dimension, and let's say when we go to sleep then we and we travel in the dream state and go into our do our visionary work and our soul travel we're we we become aware of some of these other realities and dreams uh, and dimensions of existence so we have the pineal gland and then in front of the pineal gland uh, lying right under the frontal lobes of the brain we have the the thalamus. Now, some people get that confused with the thymus. The thymus is in the chest and regulates healing. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the thalamus is a really intricate uh, uh, little glandular system, and this correlates with our third eye. So, if you if you're interested enough, look at the thalamus. On the internet, take a or in a you know in an old uh, uh, anatomy book and look at how intricate that little system is. So these are the two parts of your brain that you're using with with the crown chakra and the third eye. So we're going to talk about a lot about the third eye with psychic healing. Psychic healing is the ability and the power to use use the benefits, modes of function, 
and faculties of the human brain and mind field to project, to cause healing to occur over the course of time or immediately within ourselves, our world, or another person. And with psychic healing, when you when you start to become activated into this, and many of the people that are listening, and as well as you and I and other healers out there that are very gifted psychics, uh, we are always doing different levels of psychic healing. The interesting thing about this phrase is that the phrase itself can actually be healing in the in the power of it, in the power of the projection of, of what it represents. Um, the, the universe, you and I, in our experience, everyone out there in the world, we're all having an experience, and we've heard, well, it's all about love, and it's all about the heart, and yes, while this is true, and it's all love, and... You know, we've got to bypass the mind and and everything. And yet, the important thing to remember is that everything we are having, every single experience, moment, nanosecond, uh, in this reality and all of the other dimensions and realities, we're having through our mind. We we can, that is our, this is our greatest tool of perception. Our mind is our greatest tool of perception. So employing uh, psychic healing is going to be a really powerful way to project energy and manifest. We will uh, talk about manifesting a little bit, too, as we get into it. But healing, so with a field of energy, so psychic healing, we, we heal through psychic healing with a directed a beam of energy from our third eye out to whatever situation we're thinking about, another person, whether they're in our immediate uh, space or whether they're in a remote location. Uh, and if we're working on ourselves, psychic healing, we can project energy down into a part of our own body and start to affect it in that way. So there, there are, some, there are uh, many different dynamics and aspects of psychic healing that are very powerful. And uh, it can project as a beam from your brain, your mind, your third eye, or it can radiate out through the mind field in a 360-degree spherical energy field from you And this is what happens a lot of times with people that have very heightened frequencies for healing and also included in that some of the great masters like uh, Christ or let's say Sai Baba or Babaji. There's these people that have these uh, masters that have gone before us to teach and heal and, and guide humanity that have radiated a field out that is so strong not only their mind field, but their heart uh, and the rest of their system, all integrated together, beaming out or radiating this powerful, uh, these powerful waves of healing. So when somebody would step in front of them, maybe they would at times uh, uh, choose to heal someone or accept someone's request for healing directly and direct that healing energy to that person. Other times, this radiance coming out uh, will will just influence everything around it. And I, I find both of those to be really unique dynamics. Uh, Bill, let's take our next caller, which is area code 720. Hello, 720. Hello. And who do we have the pleasure of speaking to? My name is Laura. Hi, Laura. And Laura, what is your hey. what is your question today, Laura? Um, so I was just wondering what you can see about career for me. 
Okay, Laura. Uh, what is your full name? Laura Clark. Okay, Laura. Where and where are you calling from? Huh? San Diego. Call up our. Um, okay. California. California. Beautiful. Not quite. Beautiful yeah. San Diego. Where they? Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, Laura, are are you trained in the health industry? I'm doing that as we speak, so there's your validation. Okay. <laughs> um, I what, The reason I'm asking is because I'm getting a resonance for you uh, that's inland. Uh, I'm not seeing it like being right on the coast, but I'm seeing it in in the city in that main corridor that runs north and south in the city. Um, and are you are you looking for a different job or are you looking for a different position? Well, I'm in school right now to do medical assistant, but I'm I'm not finding that that's really where I want to stop. And my classes okay. the the teacher is really crazy to be honest with you and I'm just I, it's been a lot of roadblocks. I'm just wondering, God, what, am I doing the right thing here? Should, okay. It, it, okay. It seems pretty emotional. Um, okay. There's a couple different things I'm getting a, a strong resonance for you on. Um, number one is I see you, <clears throat> excuse me, I see you commuting from San Diego to surrounding subsidiary. Uh, yeah. Cities okay. or principalities, you know. Uh, yep. And in your work, and uh, you may want to investigate. You may want to investigate in the medical field, uh, medical transcriptions, and uh, uh, records, medical records. So the filing the record keeping and the transport of medical records. Yeah. Uh it's a I, it's a can special I just say place. something to you? Sure. I would hate that. I know you're just trying to help me, but I would hate to sit at a desk. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's that's fair. It, I, I just want to be honest with you. Okay, that's what I'm getting as a as a possibility for something okay. that there's an opportunity there. I'm just saying there's an opportunity, totally. and the opportunity in it is that there's freedom in it. So it's instead of sitting in okay. one office, instead of sitting in one office as a medical assistant, uh, working with the same, you know, flow of people coming in with yeah. one doctor or a, a series of doctors in the same place, you would be on your own time, you would be keeping your own hours, you would be subcontracting, and you would be directly involved with multiple uh, m multiple uh, offices that you can grow as you want to, <clears throat> and I think there's more money involved with that. So okay, you, that, okay. There's, the, there's the freedom in it. It's just it's worth it's worth to just taking a look at. It. You don't ha nobody totally. has to do anything. Absolutely. But the other thing that I'm getting a reference uh, resonance for you is uh, in something to do with environmental science. Uh, environmental science or uh, organizations that are uh, doing earth, maybe earth cleanup or biological uh, save the planet kind of stuff. Yeah. Maybe it's not save the whole world, but maybe it's something that's local that is a uh, a reputable and a profit profitable foundation uh, platform that uh, you could be involved with. And that might uh, that might open the playing field up for you. Okay. That right. that gets you a little 
both of those scenarios get you a little more involved with something that is outside of the classroom, uh, that's outside of the scope of thinking about, well, I'm just going, I think the thing that's getting you is that it's what you wanted to do. You wanted to go into medicine and all of this, but you, you're you starting to uh, feel like you're kind of weighted down in one place. Like, I'm in this class, I, I'm not resonating exactly. with the teacher, and that's starting to, to wear on me, and now I'm thinking that, now I'm seeing my life path here. I'm just going to go from this right into a job, and I'm going to sit in an office somewhere. And um, So... I think some more. I think some freedom for you. I mean, San Diego is all about freedom. You know, I mean, yeah. The 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 energy of the place is just such a compared to other places in the country. It's just such an amazing, magical place where you can just you can always feel this freedom in the air and the energy. So, uh, where where you can always experience that by going outside and going to the ocean or driving around or going out to I feel like you really need to feel that within whatever you're doing for your work. You need to feel, you need a sense of freedom and uh, the ability to to be abundant, prosperous in a very creative way. I see a lot of colors around uh, around you and what and where you need to. Um, Expand out into, if that makes sense. The, uh, I would, yeah, it does. I would, Freedom cues. Yeah, I would. I would. Uh, I would check out. Uh, uh, and it may also there. There's there's a little bit of something to do with animals in there. So it may be stuff involved with local pollution, uh, animals, biological cleanup. Uh, uh, helping people to live I love better lives more than anything. Yes. Um, and uh, I think if you, I think if you do just a little bit of research and and uh, do a little bit of looking and make a few phone calls, get out and drive around a little bit, I think you're going to yeah. find what you're looking for. Okay. So, Thank you so much. There's, absolutely, and you may even you may even have a career changeover, like you know. I mean, that that isn't always the best answer to hear uh, when you've invested X amount of dollars to go to school. But the the key here is what makes you happy. Yeah, that's the important thing. That's the most important thing. You want to be I abundant and prosperous. And you want to be happy. So go for what makes your wings expand and your heart open. And uh, get out to the ocean and take just, you know, take a little breather and go into this. And then get okay. online and look around and and, act, and look at some of these companies and foundations and see what you can find. Because I'm sure that that just feels like there's a direct resonance for you. Yeah. I feel Thank Laura you. as I feel Laura as part of a medical assistant um you would be doing medical billing and you would be doing that in in uh the uh front office you would be a front office medical assistant and so you might be doing the medical billing to start off and then you'll go and then I agree with Bill that you're going to go into medical transcription that you're going to go into the medical billing field. And the medical billing field would pay you uh, more money and being able to work with a, instead of one doctor uh, with a group of doctors. So I think that that's going to be good for you. So I think it's worth researching. And I feel that, um, that you know, once you get to finish school, that, the job is going to be in a different area of San Diego than where you're living now. Uh, so there's going to be a move that you're going you're going to be moving. And I'm also seeing a dog. Do you have a dog? Yes, he's there. I have him right at my 
my feet right here. <laughs> what kind of dog is he? Um, they're two Shih Tzus. Oh, they're cute. I oh, love they're them adorable. more than anybody. <laughs> I oh, like yeah, them more so, than anyone. <laughs> they're so funny. Uh, oh, they, they have such they have such personalities, and they're so funny. And those dogs just love you, and they follow you around. They do. I can't go anywhere without them. They're like, excuse me, mommy, I told you right now to be with you. <laughs> and, and they like your mother. They like your mother a lot and your sister. Yeah. Aww. They seem, they like everybody. They're very loving dogs, but they seem to resonate more with women. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And they're good dogs. And, yeah. you know, how can Laura get in contact with you? Uh, Laura, if you'd like to get in contact, uh, my website's billfoss.net, and my okay. phone number is nine. My phone number is nine one eight seven seven zero three eight one zero. And you could get a hold of me at eight one eight seven four four five two four one. Or go to my website, PsychicHorizon.com. And thank you for calling the Psychic Horizon Show, Laura. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, Laura. (laughs) Bye. I'm now going to continue my interview with uh, Bill Foss. And then we're going to take our next caller, which is area code 310. What is the origins of psychic healing, Bill? Oh, Shelley, that's a good question. Uh, psychic healing goes back over the ages, and the, the, the term psychic healing, when we hear that, it, it reminds us or it can remind us back to uh, some of the earlier books, let's say in the 1900s, uh, the 1800s, the 1700s, where pe- they, they just worded things a lot more practically, colorfully, just different. Uh, It was a different time in history. So they they also used to use terms like uh, if somebody was psychic, they might have called you a mentalist. So uh, as we work with telepathy and we work with clairvoyance, uh, these were also older terms that were used. Uh, And if someone was known to use telepathy, they might have been referred to as a telepathist. So just remember that if you're in the airport and you don't want to say I'm a psychic and somebody says, so what do you do for a living? You can say, well, I'm a telepathist. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, So psychic healing has its roots that go all the way back to ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, uh, Celtic, Times. And I, I want to go even a little one step farther, and I want to say ancient shamanism. So as we're experiencing everything with the mind, where the shamans would work deeply with the earth and with the soul energy of another person, nothing can be accomplished without the faculties of the mind. So. I'm going to say this is an ancient level of psychic healing. Uh, Psychic healing itself is, in ancient times, was thought to be about using energy vibration and harnessing the mind. So using energy vibration, projecting energy vibration, and harnessing the mind. Uh, In ancient Egypt, the... uh, the priestly class was, you know, there were workers, there were uh, uh, masons, there were uh, soldiers and military, there were artisans, uh, there were cooks, 
and culinary people, and then there uh, was the, were the priestly class and all of the people that were studying spiritually about the earth, about energy, about the processions of nature, uh, and using uh, all of the ancient sim- symbologies, uh, the hieroglyphs and, and the deities that were working with at that time, they would... Uh, they would go into uh, the order of the priesthood. So let's say, for instance, the order of Melchizedek was one of those ancient uh, priest classes or orders. So it's more like a, a, a university, if you will. So they would all, everybody that was going to be trained as a priest uh, or an adept on their way to being that, and these were, they would all be in service to the priests in doing the rituals, in uh, helping people to heal. Uh, and they had, like, power sources that they were using. They were working with spheres. They were working with geometric shapes, pyramids. Uh, and they would project energy. You know, the priestly class, they would work with the royal families and train the royal families to be healers for the people. And oftentimes they would use things like healing rods, Egyptian healing rods, with crystals and copper and gold, or jewelry that projected energy. Uh, and as they were, uh, their, their culture was based around sun worship. A lot of these priests were doing solar gazing. So solar gazing is where right around sundown or sun up that you're bringing or drinking in this energy of the soul, the sun into your eyes, which I've had some experience with, and it's a very powerful thing to do. But this opens the pineal gland, and it opens the thalamus gland that we're talking about that correlates with the third eye, and it allows one to project energy out to heal someone. So... Uh, they were also able to use the same dynamics of that they would employ for psychic healing. They were using it for astral travel because they were developing the third eye, uh, opening the third eye. Uh, ancient Greece, uh, with the Oracle of Delphi, uh, psychic healing was used there. Uh, Celtic times, ancient Scandinavia, uh, all over the world, many different places. Uh, London, in, uh, old, in olden days, and olden times, uh, London, the UK, psychic healers, there was, there was a huge early community there of psychics, mediums, uh, clairvoyants, uh, and healers. And this is what old or ancient London was one of the places where that term came about, psychic healing. Uh, because And even today in London, there's a huge psychic community going there. So in a lot of times, um, it's very interesting. A lot of times I'll do readings for someone that's a gifted medium or a gifted psychic, and I, they have a direct line back to to being in London or, or the U.K. in that area of the world where the energy vibration, uh, there's a certain energy vibration with the astral plane that's open with the earth uh, grid that creates a dynamic that was very powerful for mediumship, psychic awareness and this new uh, in that time they considered it a new technique but they were drawing on ancient times back to Egypt and other places in the world which was psychic healing that's interesting well let's take our next caller uh, Bill which is area code 310 hello 310 hello my name is Cecilia and I I have a kind of a two part question I'm a walk-in, and I, I know I believe that there may be some things with my like cellular memory that's left behind that um, I'd like to, to balance for um, this this 
form, this body. And I'm going to Egypt next week, and I sense that there's going to be another type of um, soul braiding or soul change of some type. And I want to know if you if you pick that up, and if so, is there something that I can do um, to prepare for that in the way of a psychic healing? Uh, yes. Uh, what is your name again, dear? Cecilia. Yes, Cecilia. And where are you at now? What area are you living in? I'm in. I'm. I'm. Well, I'm. I've been traveling for, I guess, about eight and a half years. But in the moment, I'm in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Okay. Oh, you're calling from Shanghai. Chiang Mai. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, okay. So there's as I'm vibing into everything for you. Now you are yeah, you're on a soul's journey. Uh, yeah. You you have lived there before. Uh, you definitely lived in ancient Egypt before. And as you're aware of your your walk-in uh, situation, I think there's there's a couple things that I would recommend. Uh, now. The comment that you made about your soul energy, with a walk-in soul, you are always going to have the remembrances, whether it's on a cellular level or a body-spirit level, you're always going to have remembrances of your old self. Uh, And the reason for this is because every person, I talk about this in the workshops and the book, Journey to the Akashic Records, on it. On, on a detailed level, we literally have two souls, and we're not usually aware of it. The mind and the ego kind of get stuck back and forth between these two. So we have a celestial soul, which is that's your walk-in. Okay, you have had a change okay. out with the soul, which, which is a unique situation. It doesn't happen every day. It's not super common. It's not uncommon, but it's not super common. Uh, this walk-in is the celestial soul, which is the, this is the part of God. This is the co- this is the cosmic energy being. This is the fingertip of God that comes and houses and sits around the body and operates through the senses out into the world. And this is one part. This is a great part of your being. The other part of your being that animates your body and. Uh, or your body temple that that sits in your body is is the body spirit. So this is what we call the body spirit or the body soul. And you're always going to have remembrances there uh, that that are a play back and forth. So the the question that you want to ask yourself is how much do how much do I want to dwell on from my past? And make peace with it and let it go. And the other thing that I would recommend is to bring your hands up over your head and close your eyes. And this is something that you can do. And this is beneficial for all of us, by the way. You bring your hands up over your head and you start to breathe energy through the palms of your hands. And you visualize a golden field around your body, over your head, as your soul. And you start to breathe the soul through your hands. And as you breathe the soul through your hands, pull your soul, pull your hands down very slowly. And pull that soul field into your body. And you can do this, take about five, you know, three to five minutes to do this. You can do this as much as you want with no side effects. It will just be better and better for you. But as you're going to Egypt, you want to make sure that your soul is integrated with your body. Because there's, Egypt has a lot of open portals and a lot of, you know, there's just a lot of stuff going on there. There's a lot of extraterrestrial action, there's a lot of entity action, and there's a lot of uh, souls that are moving around. There's also a lot of deities and ancient uh, 
you know, all of the gods and goddesses and the, uh, the, the priestly class. So all of that's happening. you got all that happening. You want to make sure that your soul is integrated with your body before you walk into all that so that your soul doesn't get separated and something else happens. Now, all of that said, the other thing that I would recommend is to get your piece, get yourself a nice large piece of black obsidian. Black obsidian is uh, it's a psychic stone, but it's also self-clearing, and it will clear you. So it's, it's one of the only stones that is clearing, and will it's going to project energy of clearing, not only for you, around you, and through you, but it's going to clear a path around you, and it's going to allow you to be open to what you need to receive while you're there. Okay. So Bill, how can, I, I how can Cecilia get in contact with you? Uh, Cecilia, if you want to get in contact, I'd be happy to read for you. My number is uh, 918 seven seven zero three eight one zero here in the US and my website is billfoss.net that's B I L L F O S S dot net. And thank you thank for calling you, Cecilia. Shelly, do thank you, you have anything to add? Um I feel that um the the trip to Egypt is there's going to be a spiritual awakening that you're going to have. You're going to be uh, receiving some information. And I feel that that would happen when you're near the pyramids because I see you going inside the pyramids and I see you having this spiritual experience, this spiritual awakening inside of the pyramids. Um, and whatever information is coming through, it's going to be, you're never going to be the same. It's going to be life-changing. It's going to be profound. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Cecilia. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. And how can you're I welcome. Get in touch Have you, a good Shelley? weekend, Cecilia. Thank you. Thank you, I Cecilia. To, thank you, Cecilia. I wanted to thank Bill Foss for being my special guest today. I want to thank Tiffany White Sage Woman of Goldilocks Production for producing the Psychic Horizon Show, and I want to thank all the callers who participated. Thank you, Bill. Have a good weekend. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Shelley. You, you too. Thank you so much. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> 